Since getting a Core i5-13600K last year, I tried to get the best performance at a low power consumption, and the new BIOS from ASRock helps with that. The ASRock Z690 Steel Legend has made great improvements in power efficiency with the Core i5-13600K since BIOS version 13.02. When I initially got this board, I updated it to BIOS version 9.03 which was the first BIOS that supported 13th generation CPUs. I noticed that the old BIOS seemed to use quite a bit of power at stock. Because of that, on the old BIOS, I ended up undervolting the CPU to reduce power consumption. When I updated to the new BIOS, I retested Cinebench R23 and noticed that the power draw was considerably lower than before. I have made previous changes to my setup in an attempt to lower temperatures such as adding a contact frame and changing the thermal interface material. I am going to flash back to the original BIOS I used for this board, which was 9.03, and then compare it to the latest BIOS, which is 15.02 beta. In BIOS 9.03 and Cinebench R23, with the BIOS set to factory defaults, the Core i5-13600K is using an average of 181 watts. After flashing to BIOS 15.02 beta, in the same Cinebench R23 test, with the BIOS at factory defaults, the 13600K is using an average of around 149 watts. This is a pretty significant difference from the old BIOS. This is a difference of over 20%. The CPU is also running 9 degrees cooler than the old BIOS. If you want a good undervolt at stock settings, then the new BIOS at default settings is a great choice. Saving 30 watts at the same clocks and running 9 degrees cooler is a great result for the newer BIOS. In my testing, BIOS 13.02 up to BIOS 15.02 beta performs similarly at stock settings. The new BIOS comes very close to the power figures I showed in a stock clock undervolt in a prior video. Since the new BIOS is already undervolted, in order to increase clocks, I have to also increase the CPU voltages. I am going to add 200 MHz to the P cores and cache ratio, and 300 MHz to the E cores. This will bring me to 5.3 GHz for the P cores, 4.2 GHz for the E cores, and 4.7 GHz for the cache ratio. The process in the BIOS is as follows. After updating the BIOS, press F6 to enter advanced mode. Enter the CPU configuration and the OC Tweaker menu. Here you can change the clock speeds for the CPU. I am setting an all P core ratio of 53, which equates to 5.3 GHz. I am setting an all E core ratio of 42, which equates to 4.2 GHz. I am setting the CPU cache ratio to 47, which equates to 4.7 GHz. In order to reach these clocks, with stability, I must now increase the voltage. I use the fiber menu to increase the voltage offsets. I am going to add plus 40 millivolts to the core voltage offset, the E-Core L2 voltage offset, and the ring voltage offset. But I'm going to undervolt the system agent by a minus 40 millivolt offset. I try to keep the system agent as low as possible and it seems to need around minus 40 millivolts to have my system stable with the RAM set to DDR4-4000. In the voltage configuration menu, the only value that I change is the DRAM voltage. I set this to 1.4 volts, which allows me to reach DDR4-4000. I will also point out that the type of cooler selected in the BIOS can change the power characteristics of your CPU. At factory defaults, I am set to a 240 to 280 millimeter liquid cooler 
which sets my long duration and short duration power to 241 and 253 respectively. These are the maximum wattages allowed, and these will be more than enough for the 13600K. However, if your BIOS is set to air cooling, the long duration power is only 125 watts, which will cause you to lose performance. With the air cooling setting, after 56 seconds has expired, the power usage will drop to 125 watts, which will lower the clocks in certain scenarios. Other than the CPU settings, I also make adjustments to my DRAM configuration. RAM overclocking is something that is very time consuming, but there are some good guides online that can help you with this process. I personally used a DDR4 overclocking guide from GitHub, which had some useful information linked in the description. When DRAM overclocking, it's important to know which type of RAM sticks you have as different types of RAM sticks overclock differently. I am using a kit of Crucial Ballistics, which uses Micron BDI. For most people, I'd probably recommend sticking to an XMP profile, as that is quick and easy, and in many situations, you won't notice a difference. I also set the BCLK frequency to 100.25. Since this brings the BCLK value in Hardware Info 64 up to 100, at default settings, Hardware Info 64 reports the BCLK as 99.8, which leads to slightly lower reported clocks. Aside from that, the only other changes I make to the BIOS settings is that I set CPU Fan 2 slash Water Pump to the Water Pump setting since I am using a 280mm liquid cooler. And I change my chassis fans to monitor CPU temperatures so that they spin up when the CPU temperature rises. After making these changes and running Cinebench R23, my power consumption is almost 170 watts. That is more power than the new stock BIOS as expected since we increased the core voltage offset by plus 40 millivolts but it is still less power than the old BIOS at default settings and runs 3 degrees cooler than the old BIOS at default settings. In terms of score, this overclock increases my Cinebench R23 score by over 1400 points, which is around a 6% improvement. That is a good improvement considering the P cores, E cores, and cache increased by 3.9%, 7.7% and 4.4% respectively. This is similar to the first overclock I arrived to at last November. Since I'm only at 170 watts in this test, I could increase millivolts higher to go for a higher overclock. But in my testing, I needed close to a plus 100 millivolt offset just to get an extra 100 megahertz stable on the cores which caused the wattages to go up to nearly 200 watts in this test. That didn't seem worth it to me for what would maybe amount to a 2% gain. BIOS version 13.02 was the first BIOS that fixed the power consumption for the 13600K. The power usage is now significantly lower than it was previously under CPU loaded scenarios. The new BIOS are effectively undervolted by default, so if you want to increase the clocks, you will need to increase the voltages. Newer BIOSes also allow you to increase the ring ratio and have the setting work properly in Windows. In some older BIOSes, ring ratio overclocking did not work correctly. A nice feature of BIOS version 14.04 and later is that there is now support for next generation processors. This is likely the 14th generation Intel CPUs that are rumored to be arriving in a few months. I look forward to seeing how the next generation Core i5 compares to my 13600K overclocked to 5.3 GHz P cores and 4.2 GHz E cores. In the end, 
if you update to BIOS version 13.02 or later, there is no need to undervolt anymore. Now you will need to increase voltages if you want to increase clocks. It's great to see how large an improvement a BIOS can make to a CPU. I'm personally using a 280mm liquid cooler along with a contact frame and good thermal interface material, which all help to reduce temperatures. Next gen CPU support is also nice if you were interested in upgrading to a faster CPU in the future. It is good to see that cache ratio overclocking was fixed too. If the 13600K was re-reviewed with a new BIOS,